morning, everyone, and welcome to The Hub Online. I am so glad that you joined us this morning. I am getting ready to go fishing, and I am just so excited. And I just have to say that I am an excellent fisherman. Or is it fisherwoman? Anyways, I've been going fishing with my dad since I was a little girl, and I must admit that I am quite the pro. But first, today, we are wrapping up our summer series on faith. We've been talking about it for two whole months now, so you should definitely know what faith is. Let's say it together. Faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. Great job, you guys. Now, I've put together a fun little experiment for us to, dr to try today. But since you guys aren't here with me, who could I get? Excuse me, ma'am, did you just say you was a pro fisher? <laughs> well, I mean, I like to call myself that. Good. I got this here fishing line wrapped around my exterior extremities, if you could. Uh, oh, 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 perfect. You are just in time. You sit here. Is this how you remove fishing wire, ma'am? No, 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 no. But since you are here and you can't go anywhere, I'm gonna test my experiment out on you. Cool? Is this a fishing experiment? No, 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 no. But I, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. You can just call me the Rod Squad, ma'am. Rod Squad? Like, as in fishing rod? That's me, the one and the only. Okay, mm you just sit here and don't move, okay? So, I've got this Ziploc bag full of water. What do you think would happen if we poked holes in the bag of water? It would probably leak, ma'am. Shh, shh, not you, not you. You, at home, any guesses? Well, I'm gonna see how much faith Rod here has in me if I were to put this bag of water over his head and tested out my experiment. I don't have much faith in you at all. I just met you. Shh. Are you guys at home ready for this? I'm not ready. Well, you know, sometimes in life we can get we can feel like we are getting poked by holes. Sometimes your friend moves away. Sometimes a family member might get sick. Sometimes our pets die. <laughs> it hurts, but trusting in God is, is a bit like Rod here trusting in me to hold this bag of water over his head. Now, he only got a little bit wet, but he didn't get soaking wet and the bag never popped. So when I was holding that bag of water over Rod's head, he had a lot of trust in me, and we can trust in God, even when things seem to be going horribly wrong, which luckily for Rod here, it did not. Rod, are you all good? All good, I guess. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to go fishing. I'll see you guys later. Ma'am, uh, ma'am, 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 I'm still stuck. Hey, hey. Hey, help me. Help. Hello? Anybody? You spoke one word and the dark became light. I believe it, I believe it, yeah. You spoke my name and my heart came to light. I believe it, yeah. I wanna sing about it. I wanna scream and shout it. I'm gonna sing it right now. At the top of my lungs, I sing. With all of my heart, I will praise you. God, you are everything. You're the reason I lift my voice. At the top of my lungs, I sing. With all of my heart, I will praise you. God, you are 
Welcome to The Hub. I'm so excited you joined us today. Today is our summer series finale. So all month long, we've been talking about faith. Faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. And I've loved diving into the story of Paul and looking at his life. I mean, if we look at his life, it was pretty crazy, right? He had to have a lot of faith. First, here was this guy who didn't believe in Jesus. He was killing all of those people who did believe in Jesus. Then he walked on a road. He was blinded. He believed in Jesus. Then he could see. And then he was shipwrecked. He was bitten by a poisonous snake and he was put in jail so many times I can't even count. I mean, his life was crazy, right? But in all of that and everything that Paul went through, he trusted God to get him through all of it. He believed and had faith. And today we're gonna find out what it looks like. What do we do after we believe in Jesus? What is our plan? What is, what's our job? Just like with Paul, he knew his mission was to tell the world about Jesus. I mean, this is the guy that went overseas to tell the world about Jesus. So that's what he did. What are we supposed to do? When we finally believe in Jesus and we are living for him and we're trying really hard, what does God want us to do? That's exactly what we're going to find out about today. But first, I am ready to go fishing. Have you guys ever been fishing before? Like, have you ever actually caught a fish, like a real fish, not a fake one, a real fish? Was it big? Was it huge? That's crazy. I love to go fishing. I really love it when I'm reeling when I'm reeling in the fish. Yeah, like that, that's totally how it works, right? So I love to do that, but to go fishing and to be a really good fisherman, you have to be prepared, right? What are some of the things that fishermen need? Well, they need a fishing rod and they probably need one that works. They also need bait. Let's see, it's 
see what I got in my pockets. Mm, I don't do so well with the bait thing. I no, that's that's a hard no right there. Uh, let's see what else do they need. They need hooks. <laughs> that's a giant hook. They probably need a tackle box. They need somewhere to go fishing, right? So you probably need a pond, a lake, or an ocean. Uh, you may or may not need a boat, but you definitely need to pack your patience, right? Because when you go fishing, the fish don't just jump into your boat, do they? No, they don't. You need a lot of patience. Then you're gonna need some skill, <laughs> a lot more skill than me, to reel in your fish. Our story today is about some fishermen who, you guessed it, were in a boat fishing. So pull out your Bibles. I know they've probably been a little dusty the last couple of months since we've been in quarantine. Pull them out, dust them off, open it up in the middle of your Bible and turn to the right a little and you're gonna run right into the book of Matthew. So we start with Matthew chapter four, verse 18. That's where we're at today. In this story, Jesus is walking along a beach and he sees these two fishermen. You may have heard of them. Their names, Simon Peter and Andrew. Now, Simon Peter and Andrew were not always Jesus' disciples. They actually were fishermen first. And this is the day that they started to follow Jesus. And that's the story we're diving into. So Jesus is walking along the beach. He sees these two fishermen off in the distance and he yells at them and goes, hey guys, Come follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Huh? Fishers of what? <laughs> it says fishers of men, like, like real people. Well, Simon, Peter, and Andrew dropped their nets right there, left their boats, and they followed Jesus. Now, today, what? Do you think that would look like exactly for us to go fishing for men? I mean, I, if we think about it, it can't be easy, right? I mean, pulling, reeling a human onto a physical fishing pole has to be impossible, I would, I would think. <laughs> would they even accept being reeling in? Would they like fight against it? Or I mean, what would you even use for bait? Le would that work? I mean, would you, if you, someone was fishing for you, would you take it? I, hmm. I know. I've got the best bait. This is going to work. We're going to go try it. So sit right there and I will be, I'll be right back. A few moments later. Twelve seconds later. Whoa, that was crazy, right? I mean, <laughs> reeling people in, going fishing for people, that's insane. But Jesus said the words, come follow me and I will make you fishers of men. 
Hmm. You see, Paul knew exactly what Jesus meant when he said those words. I mean, think about his life. Everything that Paul did, everything that Paul went through, he did so he could tell the whole world about who Jesus was and what he did for us. (laughs) It's amazing, right? But what does it look like to really fish for people? And did Jesus really mean for us to take a fishing pole with some goldfish and reel people in and net them and get them on our side? Not really. What Jesus is saying here is he wants us to go out into the world just like Paul did. And no matter what happens, continue to spread his name and tell others about him. So how can we prepare ourselves? Just like fishermen, they have to prepare themselves. They need all of their equipment and everything to be able to go fishing and fish for fish. How can we prepare ourselves to go fishing for people? Well, there's a couple of ways we can do that. First, (laughs) reading your Bible is one of the best ways to prepare your heart and your mind to tell your friends about Jesus. Sometimes Jesus talks to us by reading his word. He also talks to us when we pray to him. And those are the best ways we can prepare our hearts to tell our friends about Jesus. Second, we need to go out into places that people are. That's not too hard, right? Your school, your soccer field, your church, everywhere you can think of, the ice cream shop even. Those are places that you can tell others about Jesus. And then third, the third thing that we need to do in order to prepare ourselves and equip ourselves to go tell everyone about Jesus is we need to be patient. Just like fishing for fish, it takes a really long time to get a really big fish that we can take home. With fishing for people, we have to be patient. Sometimes we can tell a friend five times about who Jesus is and who God is and what they've done for us but they just don't seem to listen. And it can get really frustrating on our part, right? But be patient. Let God be God and let him take over their heart in his own way. So what does all this fishing for men look like in our world today? Well, I've named a couple of things earlier. Let's say, for example, you're on the soccer field. You're at practice. You can pray for your team before a big game or even before practice right in front of them, praying over them for them to see and hear the words you're saying. Another way is maybe when you're at home, do something nice for your neighbor, maybe cut their grass or leave them a really nice note on their front doorstep, letting them know you're praying for them. Another way is maybe when you're at school, whether that's in person or online, you can definitely tell your friends about who Jesus is and what he's done for you. Or let's say you have a younger sibling or a young cousin. Reading the Bible with them is a great way to introduce to them who Jesus is. So there are so many creative ways that you can share who Jesus is without having to go across the world. And you can do that today. Remember, you can use your faith to tell others about Jesus. You know, sometimes it can be really scary to tell others about Jesus and about who God is. You don't know what they will do, what they will say, how they will react. It can be kind of scary, right? But God wants us to put our trust in him. And just like Paul, we're going to do the work that God's called us to do. Will you guys pray with me? Father God, thank you so much for this lesson on how to reach others for you. Whether it be a simple prayer or a simple act of kindness or an entire conversation, Lord, allow our words and our actions to reflect who you are and point others to you. Thank you for sending us your son, Jesus. We love you. In your name I pray. Amen. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us today. We had so much fun doing this one. We hope you did too. We hope you catch next Sunday at 10.15 a.m. our live pre-show happening. 10.15 Facebook page. Don't miss it. We're going to have lots of fun, super interactive, fun games for you guys to win prizes. Don't miss it. We'll see you next week. Bye, guys.